I haven't got time to mark this motherfucker. Here we go again. We can't hear anybody. Nobody can talk to anybody. You guessed it, Pressure Points with your two favorite hosts. I'm D, and this is Corndog AJ. We're coming at you with Season 7, Episode 28, The Weight of a Soul. We're going to talk about your favorite, absolutely non-biased science experiment from the early 1900s. Find us on Instagram and Patreon, at Points of Pressure. Let's get to it, bitch. Well, turn the fucking thing off, you dumbass. Do you want to test that that intro? It sounds a little crunchy. It's a, it's a we're gonna crunchy, we're crunchy gonna pause intro. here. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. That was bad. It was sorry. That's there's something bad. going on with our soundboard. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. Sorry, that sounded really bad. What a way to yeah. open Technical open the difficulties. show. Difficulties. Don't mind. We're not Don't gonna go us. back and like yeah. fix it. We're though. not gonna change it. You'll just have to deal with it, yeah. uh, like we had to. Yeah. How you been? How, it's been, it's been f- uh, a few 16 days. 16 hours. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah. 16 hours since we last worked together. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should have we should have recorded a show live from the audience. That would have been cool. Would have sounded like show, shit. Though. Good show. Yeah, we saw Killer Mike up in Ogden. It was Fantastic. Worth it. Amazing. Oh, when, he, when he played Reagan about coomed in my pants. I did. I did. I did. Come, yeah. That's oh, the grass like, hey. got wet. It's like we got to get out of here. Yeah, let, let's go. Yeah, that was uh, good. Yeah, first phenomenal time. show. First time seeing him for both of us, right? Yep. Yeah. First time my wife ever used public transportation. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, train and it. bus. I love it. I kind of do. I kind of like the train. That's great. Bus, I love trains. Bus shitty. Trains. Mm-hmm. Fantastic! I love trains. Yeah, trains are great. Love love some trains. Yeah, I don't like. I don't care about looking at them. I just like riding on them. Yeah, I don't know anything about their engines or how they work. Or yes, you do. Don't lie. Anything yes. like that? No, no. I wouldn't know anything about any of that. I wouldn't know mm-hmm. anything about. They need to start listing specifics about their engine. Yeah, the Silver Bullet train in Japan. <laughs> I wouldn't know anything about them going two hundred and sixty-six kilometers per hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, it was great. It's the first concert I've been to since like since pre COVID. Really? Mm-hmm. Damn. Pretty yeah. sure. I I've only been yeah. to I went to that one like two months ago. Oh yeah. During the break. The Cowboy Bebop band. Yeah, yeah. Which was fun as shit. When they come back, we'll go. Hell yeah. Uh yeah, but past that, I haven't I haven't done people watching to the extent that we did at the show. Yeah, there were so many people. Yeah, I forget how weird people are. Oh, it's myself so included. Oh yeah, but yeah. and oh man, what was that? the the fucking? It feels like a a third of that audience was there just for the opener. Yeah, and they were so bad. They uh, were if so you're a bad. fan of uh, what a hippocampus, I think yeah. is what it was. Um, don't at me. Yeah, <laughs> actually, turn off this podcast if you like hippocampus. Yeah. Uh, I understand that uh, every yeah that everybody can have their own music taste, but if uh, that's your go-to band and you have their merch, I'm very sorry, and you should expand your horizons. <laughs> yeah, no, it yeah, was, I was rough. I'm surprised that they had two songs that were like copies of Cotton Eye Joe. Yeah, like the intro was exactly Cotton Eye Joe, <laughs> but auto-tuned. Yeah, it was him doing it. Repeat it. What was it? Yeah. <laughs> and oh, yeah, Jesus. it was weird. Anytime he tried to hit a high note, it got auto tuned because he yeah, can't hit high go, notes. And people go crazy for it. And there was a trumpet yeah, who was, was not that good. Well, I also think that his mic was not tuned down. It was way, yeah, too, it was loud. way too loud. But he was, my, my wife and I were talking about it, uh, it wasn't open enough. Oh. Playing those high notes. That's why it was like kind of that E, yeah. like E yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. As a former trumpet player, <laughs> I can critique. We just sound like fucking old men we bitching do. about the younger generation. Bitching music. about. Uh, but. Killer Mike is definitely for this yeah. generation. Are you kidding me? No, I was talking about. I know, this I know. Guy. I was. Or whoever they are. I don't fucking know. I couldn't see them. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I wanted to. But. Yeah, I was fine to not. But yeah. Still a fun time. Good yeah, show. great show. Expensive drinks. 
Oh my god. Good pizza though. So yeah, yeah. Lucky Slice was yeah, there. So bad. good pizza. Yeah. So how about the rest of the week other than the day you spent with me? Got called off work like four hours early one day. That was nice. Oh yeah. Is that why you're working Sunday now? No, no, I was always working oh, Sunday. I didn't think you were. I for some reason I was like, Oh, he doesn't work this weekend. No, no. I said I work yeah. this weekend, but the following weekend I'm free. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. No sweat. It happens. No yeah. worries. It, it was originally a four in a row, which sucks dick Oof. for twelves. But Damn. somebody didn't happen to just want to switch. So Hey, cool. I said, All right. Why not? So I basically get like I do the the Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And then I work Friday. I and then see. I work the following Thursday. So I have a, I have some Ooh, days off. Damn, not bad. That'll be nice. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Heck yeah. So uh yeah. Not bad. Yeah. Good didn't do didn't good. do much, which was good. Nice. Oh, I just had the most frustrating run in Tarkov. Uh we played four four games. Uh-huh. The server crashed on two of them. Ooh. I we you died on the first one. My crashed computer on server. Two of them. Yeah. And then uh, we died on one of them, and then the other one, I don't even remember what happened. Crashed again. It probably crashed. Damn. R.I.P. No, no. Uh, what happened is, on the fourth one, my game just crashed, so I went back in to try to reconnect, because in the base game, you can do that. Yeah. I don't know if you could do that on, on this. Doubt it. Couldn't, yeah. but me clicking on... To attempt to rejoin the server that was hosted crash by me, crash the server. Yeah. <laughs> As my wife was extracting. Gotta love it. We killed Glucar. Ooh. We like, we cleaned that shit up. Ugh. Sorry, I'm complaining. Everyone that's listening is like, what the fuck? No, are you yeah, there's like about? one person there, yeah, who knows what we're talking about. There are two people. Two people, yeah. That this should be a Patreon discussion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are two patrons who know exactly what I'm talking yeah. about right now. Uh, and if you are on Patreon, the. <laughs> newest the july episode is finally out i don't particularly recommend it it was uh, good it was good it was okay it's like i said we got to have a worst episode sometime yeah so, we're um, just setting the bar i'm lower. just glad that it was behind a paywall yeah <laughs> yeah that's great <laughs> next one will be on uh i haven't decided yet september 1st. probably uh, it'll be about 9 11 yeah we, we should do a 9 11 episode for the patrons which released does, on 9-11. Does the does 9-11 fall on a Monday? I think it falls on a Wednesday. No, I said for the patrons. We yeah, can put yeah, no, whenever. I'm just thinking out loud. Oh, oh. We if gotta, it is on a Monday, plan ahead. I don't we got to plan ahead for that. Because the 10th is on a Tuesday, yeah, so it's Wednesday. Damn. Yeah. I maybe, know when the 10th is happening. I, I Yeah. I'm prepared for when I'm going to take the rest of the week off. It's going to be a good day. You like should the satisfactory fucking oh fuck you're I can start right fucking rework and do a new factory oh god new satisfactory I'm gonna run. ruin that that game for you nah I don't think you could because I'll Cause set, I just no because we we'll work together nah, and I just start a new private server I'm like Aww. fuck you no we gotta work together you said oh we I'm would. down I'll do it but if you try to ruin the game no I'm not for gonna me. try to ruin it I just <laughs> I don't, don't care you. about the min maxing I, I don't believe no I would you. never try to ruin a game for somebody. <laughs> I just I, cannot get behind the min-maxing. The number, it's too much. I, I, I just it. haven't gotten I enough it. into it. It's only because I've put so much I've put so much time into it that I'm like, like that's Yeah, my every ore like, gets three yeah. generators, yeah. which can go to this many foundries. Overclock this machine to 33 point, like 132.7 percent yeah so i'll still help if uh if you enjoy playing video games and having a calculator at the side well actually there's a calculator implemented in the game game. uh i like using my phone though it's Mm. faster because i don't have the keypad on my uh oh yeah on your uh, keyboard keyboard uh but yeah if you like if you for some reason enjoy video games and using math in those video games and using logistics in those video games, you'd like satisfaction. I actually love it. I just need to. I haven't been able to devote the time that it deserves. You yeah, know, that's fair. Yeah. And I think, I think if when we play together, I'll be able to say like, okay, how many does this need to connect to? Okay, I got it. Go to be yourself. fair, the last time we played, you were also in school, so yeah, I yeah. That. I think I think that definitely played a role yeah. in it. Yeah, and hopefully. Uh, I'll get a PC built so that I can 
<laughs> run a massive fucking factory. That's oh, it. dude. Honestly, when it comes out, I'm like, I don't think I'm going to be playing anything else for about a year. Yeah. Yeah. At least. Yeah. Let's see uh, how much gaming PCs are on Amazon, because that's oh, how I'll I've, do it. I've been looking. <laughs> I've, or or I've should I get one of those peaking. those premium custom PCs that are real expensive? Uh, just get one and make sure that the case is big enough so that you have room to upgrade. Just uh, so go check out our Patreon so that we can buy gaming computers. <laughs> yeah, if, you to... want an, if you want an ad-free version of this show, pay us so that we can get uh, big boy computers. Yep. And so we PC can utilize uh, my laptop as a as an <laughs> ongoing server for every other game that we play. Perfect. Uh, okay, so... Do you uh, think there's one that's $389? Intel Core i5... 389 the whole yeah, PC? Yeah, 3.2 gigabyte, no. up to 3.6. Uh, Radeon RX 560? No. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM. Do you think that'll run it? No. <laughs> I mean, it might run it, but not well. Uh, yeah. So we'll we'll move into the episode. All right. Stop hey, talking about welcome to games, Gamer Talk, the new podcast, yeah, a pressure God. points experience. God, Gamer uh, Talk, but we only talk about the games we like to play and are yeah, currently playing. So you get you get opinions on three games. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Rimworld, Tarkov, Satisfactory. <laughs> yeah. Oh Jesus. Um. So yeah. Check us out on Patreon. If you want an ad-free version of the show, we do an exclusive episode every month, and we have AJ series called Voices and a bunch of sloppy seconds. So go check it out, patreon.com forward slash points o pressure. Uh, so 1907, a Massachusetts man, Duncan McDougal. What a name. Yeah, stud, stud name, uh, has put out an article that is published in the New York Times and it's called Soul Has or I guess the headline is Soul Has Weight Physician Thinks. Uh perfect. Concrete so, evidence. Uh, yeah. Duncan McDougal was he was interviewed for this article and he like they also put a ton of his uh his research into it as well. And it's divisive, to say the least, if you can't tell by the title of the fucking article. So we're going to go back. 1866, Duncan's born in Glasgow, uh, immigrates into the U.S. in the 1880s and goes to the Boston University of Medicine. Um, marries, has a son, uh, just kind of the like standard story for the time. He's nobody... like. Sorry, he's not nobody, but he wasn't really a person that, like, super stood out. Um, he was never really somebody that was like, oh, my God, like, this guy's going to go on and do big fucking things. Yeah. And so, in my opinion, I think that a lot of the research that went into this is Duncan not necessarily going for shock factor, but intentionally doing something that's divisive like how much a soul weighs um and in a way clickbaity yeah, uh, yeah. he's clickbaiting his yeah, medical career yeah, not like 18 and 1900s clickbait yeah he's trying to get that grant money yeah uh i i don't necessarily want to say that before his experiment he was a piece of shit during and after, absolutely. Um, so during and before, or I should say before he gets started on this uh, experiment, he writes this huge thesis. Um, and the crux of it and like his whole theory is that if we, or his hypothesis is if we have a soul, it holds physical space. Therefore, it must have weight, which is kind of a stretch just at the beginning. Like, well, I'm just like, what? What natural? Oh, sorry, what natural observation is he using to make this statement? Yeah, that's did he exactly. just think this up, or you know, it? A lot of times, these hypotheses need to be based on something that you've observed, something that that 
you've seen. No, and I mean, when you look at like the entire, like if we have a soul, it holds physical space. Like, like who that says in and that? Of itself why? Is like, okay, but like, why does that hold physical space? Just because we have it, like just even if you have one, I get, I understand the approach that like, if something exists, it has to be like a quote unquote measurable. tangible, measurable thing. Yeah. But, but uh, you're talking like, about hey, a soul. Yeah. The concept of like, like a soul is an intangible thing. Yeah. It's like no saying one's proved that, that you would have to first prove that a soul does exist. Yeah. And to then, then say yeah. that it would take up physical space to then say it has weight, it, not yeah. go like, oh, ghosts exist. And how much do they weigh? <laughs> like, yeah, you've got to prove the first. one section first. But it's it's also just kind of like saying, oh well, I have the the uh, oh what's what's the phrase? I have the word of God in me, yeah. so therefore I weigh more. Like, so uh, interesting that you actually bring up the word of God. No, because um, in a lot of this, well, actually, the entire experiment is when it comes to the human side aspect of it. Uh, he couldn't get approval from regular hospitals. Yeah, no shit. He had to go to a Christian hospital for them to say, and it's like a a hospital that is currently focusing on being a TB clinic. And he goes in and he says, hey, I'm looking to do this experiment. I want to find out how much the soul weighs. And of course, the Christian hospital is going to yeah, go- Yeah, the nuns are going to say, yeah, let's yeah, do they're it. They're going to go, you want to scientifically back something up? In Christianity, yeah, that sounds like the perfect fucking convert tool. Like, yeah, let's and, do it. And, yeah, no, no shit. Other hospitals, regular hospitals, said no, you can't do that here <laughs> because they're they're like, this is a ri- yeah, ridiculous, especially thing. especially considering how he wants to go about doing this because it's you can't just like weigh a person and then they die and then you like. Like six hours later, you're like, oh, plop him on the thing. Like, yeah, there are certain things that happen to a body when it dies. Mm-hmm. So, so that's his the, whole the, approach. Yeah, that was the approach. Yeah, his his entire approach is we have to be weighing them while they're actively like like the moment that they die, we're watching their weight, mm-hmm. which is like a really serious like. Man, like if you're watching weight that heavily, go see a therapist. Frank. Yeah, that that's uh, an if you're disorder. that obsessed over weight, <laughs> by all means. Um, and he needs he needs people that are immobile in a way. Well, not in a way. He needs people to be immobile. Uh, any kind of movement can fluctuate that scale. Like if yeah. these people. If if you're dying and you're having a seizure as you're dying, that scale it's hard. is going yeah, up and down. Yeah, the scale's going to be bouncing all over the place, um, and so they need to be as like stiff as fucking possible, <laughs> which is why he went to the TB clinic, and it's an extra benefit that it was also a Christian run TB clinic, uh, and he said it seemed to. To me, best to select a patient dying with a disease that produces great exhaustion. The death occurring with little or no muscular movement because in such a case, the beam could be kept more perfectly at balance and any loss occurring regularly noted. So, uh, goes to this, goes to this hospital, speaks with Dr. Cullis, uh, the guy that runs the hospital and this dude is just like, ooh, I love this idea because not only is it going to put his fucking hospital on the map, everyone's going to be like, oh, my God, that's the one where they found out how much a soul weighs, which proves souls exist, which proves God is real. It's like hook, line and stinker. Oh, my God. It's so many mental gymnastics. It's hilarious. Uh. And so McDougal gets, <laughs> I hate saying his name so much. Later on, I ended up just writing Duncan because I got tired of writing <laughs> McDougal because it's not MC Dougal, it's Mac Dougal. Oh, classic. 
Yeah, he's a fucking goober. Uh, he gets six volunteers to help with him. Uh, and Or, sorry, he gets four volunteers to help with the process. He gets six people that are more or less donating their body to his cause, uh, to his experiment. Like, sure, I'm dying. Yeah. You can put me on a scale. Yeah, much like a body shop, have you. Ah. Uh, <laughs> so the the concept of the entire thing is he has these patients placed on a cot that's on a Fairbanks scale. Have you ever seen one of those? Is that the big the big brass ones? Yeah, those are the ones that like it has one of those huge plates uh, on the bottom. And then the scale goes straight up, and it has, like, imagine a 12-inch uh, clock face yeah. in a way. And it's got, it like, uh, it's like the ones at the, uh, the fucking store when you yeah, go yeah. to, like, weigh your produce. Yeah. Like that, but, like, but with blow it up about, like, 75%. It's huge. Yeah. Uh, and it's so big so that it can account to, uh, what is it, two-tenths of an ounce, which, I mean, is pretty impressive for the time. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Because initially when I saw this, I was like, oh, my God, how is he fucking weighing these? Like, I thought they were doing it with one of those. Uh, yeah, like the, the doctor scale. Yeah, the doctor scales where you have to move the weights. And I was like, this fucking idiot. Like, this is not going to work. This they, is They're using luckily bail, they're better. They're using sandbags on, it's two plates, a beam across that they're hanging down. And he's putting bags of sand until they're equal. Uh, so, yeah, it, it goes... And breaks down to two tenths of an ounce, so five little or not five markers, uh, I don't know, a bunch of a bunch of markers in between each fucking pound. Um, but it comes out to five point six grams is your uh, your interval. Yes, your interval. Thank you. I was like, what is the fucking word for this? <laughs> uh. But I want one of those scales so bad. I think like a so life size fucking, one, like so cool, like a huge one, yeah, just a big ass scale in here that I can step on and it maxes <laughs> out, and then I'll just off <laughs> myself because yeah. I I can't weigh in on a fucking old ass scale. Um, yeah. So the entire experiment starts in April 1901, and they're going to record. The exact time of death, and they will also check the weight. They don't know how long it's going to take these people to die, and if someone's going to die, they are not taking active measures to stop them yeah. from dying at the same time. Uh, well, that would that would jostle the scale a little yeah, bit. Absolutely. Uh, and the first guy comes in. He, I would assume, he's probably. Just got like death rattle, and they're like, "Okay, well, this He's dude's going. on his way out." Wheel him in, uh, get him on the cot, and they start observing. It takes just like just under four hours for this dude to die. Jesus! And they're actively recording his weight through the whole thing so that they can watch those influxes of like, oh, when he inhales, we see like. The weight go up when he exhales is he moving the scale enough that it like lowers or bounces or whatever so any changes that are happening they're notating every fucking thing right as death hits the weight changes three quarters of an ounce <gasps> so 21 grams um and so this is the start this is the very start. And it's, I mean, if this is what you're looking to find, that's mm. fairly good evidence for your first fucking death. Yeah, Obviously, there attempt. are a lot of things to take into account. Um, but I think what's interesting and what's clever about the way that they're doing this is instead of doing like weighing them post mortem, like prior and post, you don't have like, oh, well, you know, he relieved his fucking bowels all over and suddenly it's offset by like however much your last 
big shit is your body relieving itself of all of its excess this is like it's all right here boom it's it's not going to change unless you put something else on the scale you know or mm-hmm. take something off completely fair i think his approach in finding what he wants to find i think that he's doing it in the most right way that you can at and the it's time. It's an accurate yeah. way, yeah. In the 1900s. Yeah. Uh, so they bring in the second subject, and this dude takes over four hours today. It's like four hours and 15 minutes or some shit. God, just let yeah, go. Yeah, just fucking die already. Uh, that's what the name of the episode should have been. It should have been. Uh, takes over four hours to die, and his weight drops by a half an ounce. Oh. That's big news. Maybe a smaller, maybe smaller a smaller soul. soul. Yeah, more of a scumbag. Yeah. <laughs> the third patient they bring in after he dies, it's a half an ounce that goes away shortly after. Um, but uh, his weight stayed the same after one minute from when he died. Oh, so same he's weight, a demon. One minute goes by. Um, and then it dropped that the half oh, ounce. Ah. And when Duncan was interviewed and asked about this, uh, he he basically goes, "Well, the temperament of the man was slow and methodical. So really, there's no other way to explain it other than his soul just needed that time. It was very typical of him." to take his time doing things. Mm. So his soul would do exactly the same. My guess is that the soul was just like, yeah, ah, fuck, I forgot my wallet on his way out the door. Uh, Let me go grab that. Had to go search for it. It's just, it's silly as shit. Uh, The fourth patient, uh, they had a scale issue. Ah, dang. Scale malfunction, so they couldn't, I mean, you can't retest that person dying. Yeah. Uh, And my guess is they also took like, fucking six hours to die so can you imagine you, oh my god you go up and like step on the scale when you're writing the thing you're like ah oh, fuck, fuck me uh the fifth person dies there's a three eighths ounce change so less than half now we're going down uh the sixth was another like Malfunction. Someone, someone bumped it. Yeah, they ran into more problems with the sixth. So they have four results. Four results. That that's they a can that's enough on. to to create a yeah to like draw a to a conclusion. Law. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I think that that's how it follows the scientific method perfectly. Yeah, four results. Um, four results from one hospital. Yeah, with people suffering from one illness. Mm-hmm. So he Perfect. he get yeah it was the TB escaping their body yeah yeah the TB burning up <laughs> all the deaths are recorded observed they go over all of the results and the team gets together and they determine that the average weight lost across all four bodies is three quarters of an ounce that's not how averages work but <laughs> let's exa- do it I literally have. Not how averages work, though. <laughs> yeah, that's not an average. Uh, I did do the math. The actual average breaks down to 53% of an ounce, give or take like a little bit, because I mean, the scale itself goes off by fucking five and a half grams. Uh, this is 53% of an ounce is 15 grams. So they're like, the weight of a soul is 21 grams <laughs> on one fucking person. Yeah. If you were to draw a conclusion from the three deaths, I would say it weighs half of an ounce, not three quarters. No, I would say I wouldn't make that conclusion. I would make it the conclusion of... We need more bodies. <laughs> we need more bodies. And scales always have a margin of error. And I love that the margin of error is like... Either 25 or 33% of, like, what they're weighing. Um, But, like, even then, they went with the average being the highest side of it. Instead of going with what was, I mean, two of them went down by half an ounce. I think it's fair to assume, hey, maybe it weighs half an ounce. Maybe that guy just had a fat soul. (laughs) Jesus. And they're they're like, oh, fat soul. Yeah, that, that tracks for everyone. That's yep. the weight of a soul. Um, yeah, 
quite the uh quite the conclusion i suppose yeah especially going public on that conclusion um he he pointed out in his notes that when the scale dropped it doesn't rebound at all uh which is fair i think that that's a good observation to add to it that it's not like oh you know the dude took his final breath and like we recorded when his arm had like a fucking major mm-hmm. neurological twitch or whatever after he died so it's fair that it does, it doesn't bounce, um, but that's a fact that so many people focus on to this day when it comes to this study. Um, it's also the the study itself is written in like such a fucking like over dramatic thematic light almost. So uh, in I think it was the third person that died he said the instant life ceased the scale hand fell with a suddenness that was astonishing as if something had been lifted from the body which is just like oh my god dude should be writing sermons not yeah fucking not, science not, experiments yeah um it's like and if you're there so the thing that bothered me so much about it is that if you're there to observe facts and numbers, you can't be putting in all of these like personal and emotional responses to what's happening to the scale. Like it fell with this suddenness that the room exploded in a resounding cry, knowing that his soul had left his body. It's like that's not what that's not what science. That's not is how about. you do your fucking science experiment, McDougal. Yeah, fucking McDougal. Uh, and. Like it just it bothered me so fucking much because it's just it really is just a clickbait article. Yeah, they're they're using the those emotional things to convince people. Oh, that's what it was. I I found it. Uh, the sixth patient died on the way to the cot. It wasn't that the sixth patient like oh, they had a problem. Fuck. They just couldn't measure. They him. didn't get there quick. Yeah, enough. they couldn't weigh him before because he died probably just on like that quick. I like to think that they just had the cots on like a dolly. And so, yeah, and they just had the people tied to the tied to the bed. Yeah, and so he just died while he was on the dolly, headed into the room. Uh, and uh, McDougal was like, "I need to find a control." And if you're because if we're going to say that a soul weighs something, we need to find something that doesn't have a soul and weigh that. Oh, yeah. Uh, so what do you think he went for, or do you know what he what he goes after, what he what he weighs and dies to test its its loss? It's the of early 1900s, so I'm going to guess a black man. Close, no, not close at <laughs> no. all. Uh, I personally would think you would go with something like bugs, like they is bugs. Yeah, yeah, you do shrimps. Shrimps is bugs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, he decides to go with. Man's best friend. Oh, I knew it was a dog. Yep. McDougal jumps to the conclusion, hey, dogs don't have souls. Who who said <laughs> that? Who decided the that? The worst, like... Did he decide it, that? It's as if he was like, horses and dogs don't have souls. If I were to guess two animals that definitely would have a soul, it would be a horse and a fucking dog. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Who, who, <laughs> yeah, who so let him like, make these choices? He literally goes, I need a controlled group. Dogs don't have souls. And uh, he finds 15 dogs. Oh, my uh, God. That uh, they need to show, like, he's going to do the exact same test. He's so he has have... to strangle 15 dogs? <laughs> yeah, he's not going to a, a dog TB clinic this time. Yeah, uh, that's fucked up. He... Word gets out that he's poisoning these dogs after his article is released, and so oh, great. Uh, he he states afterwards it was hard to find dogs with diseases that kept them immobile and so close to death. I was not fortunate enough to get dogs dying from such sicknesses, so Jesus. he was going out getting dogs, 
giving them just getting them off the street. Well, yeah, or like as they're like, being walked yeah. by their owners, he's walking them. Says, "I'll take <laughs> he had, that." He had a neighbor that just had a really yappy dog at night. Yeah, and he's like, "That fucking thing doesn't have a soul. Dogs don't have fucking souls." And yeah, he so he gets fifteen dogs. Gives them sedatives, not each one like boom, 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 boom. Mm. He'll just get a dog, give it a sedative, put it on the scale, let it live, but <laughs> like paralyzed for a little bit. And then he injects something else into it that kills it Perfect. and records. His conclusion is, well, as I, as I previously thought, dogs do not have souls because there was no weight change when they died. That's not how a fucking control works, dude. You've already drawn a fucking conclusion. Your control yeah. shouldn't go based off of those results. You would go, if something dies and its weight doesn't change, even though I'm injecting and putting something onto the scale, your little poison that you're injecting into the dog, his weight isn't changing. That's your control, not the way that he's doing his control is upside down. He's well, like, yeah. my control is that people have souls and it weighs this much. And my second control is that dogs don't have them for some fucking reason. Jesus. Uh, yeah. Doesn't Fantastic. sit very perfectly, well with people. Perfectly accurate. Right. Uh, that the animal that he guessed doesn't have a soul happened to not have a soul. I know. Such a piece of shit, too. He's like... Huh. Oh, what's that? How much like a how self fulfilling much, prophecy? How much is the weight going to change if it doesn't have a soul to have the weight change? Like, what the fuck? Meanwhile, it, there's so much. There's so much going on. Like, is he using the exact same scale for the dogs and the humans? Is he? Of course not. Yeah, the cr he's walking in with like dogs that are passed the fuck out into this TB clinic. He's like, excuse yeah, exactly. me, excuse me. Excuse me, part of Just me. headed into my laboratory with a dog that's not moving in my arms. Yeah, like, it, there's so much unscientific <laughs> about this. It's so stupid. They're different environments. They're dying of different things. Like, what the fuck? I know. <laughs> He's just, it's a fucking idiot. Uh, but yeah, it shows there's no sign of weight change. Uh, proves that all animals, he draws the conclusion that all animals, like no animal has a soul. Because the, the yeah, 15 because dogs the dog, that he murdered. 15 dogs that he killed didn't have that. Didn't have it. Because the 15 dogs that he killed didn't have a soul that weighs anything. Yeah, yeah. Didn't have a soul that weighs everything. Uh, making the assumption that all, any type of soul, there are no different types of souls. It's yeah. one kind of soul, only humans have it, and it weighs something. Hey, it's like which I is said, still a preposterous hypothesis. He didn't test bugs, so bugs might have souls. Shrimps might have keep, souls. Keep that, keep that in mind, kids. Uh, after the New York Times study comes out, there are tons of scientists and physicians that read it. They're, they're like, what the fuck are you talking about, Duncan? Like, are you dense? August Clark, one of the one of the people that spoke very actively against what he did uh, breaks it down and says, based on your findings, this is why you're wrong. Uh, August Clark is a physician, and he does a ton of work with cadavers and works with people that are actively dying. He says and comes out with, when a body dies, you stop breathing, which stops a slight cooling process that uh, breathing has on your body. It momentarily increases your body temp, which causes a burst of heat that leads to sweating, which, to be fair, uh, what was it, 21 grams of salty water, probably like a table, or not even a tablespoon, like a mm -hmm. teaspoon of water across your entire body, and August Clark goes, and it would evaporate off in no time at all, yeah, which just, makes boom, evaporate, perfect like sense. Uh, and he's like, and that's where you're seeing that 21 gram weight, like weight change on that one person. By it, the way. Yeah, on that one person, most most being closer to like 15. Uh, that's where you would see that weight change. Uh, <laughs> and the re and he comes out and says 
The reason you don't see this in dogs is because dogs do not have a sweat gland. Yeah, they and it's they, like, <laughs> they have to pant off their heat. And I'd imagine Duncan's at home and he just reads this and he's like, son of a bitch. Fuck, fuck. I should have looked at dogs. Dogs don't have sweat glands or souls. Fuck. <laughs> son of a bitch. Why do people like these what things? What a terrible control. <laughs> yeah. No, he didn't think that. He probably thought, no, this guy's wrong. Yeah, he Souls just goes, are real. Mm, no, mm. sweat's not. Sweat is merely a concept, August, is what he thinks. <laughs> uh, the study itself concluded in 1906, which was about a year after Einstein's theory of relativity came out. So while Einstein was studying relativity, this guy's this guy, weighing dead bodies and oh killing my dogs. God. Uh, and in 1917, the experiment was repeated on mice led to the same results Duncan found because mice have sweat glands in their fucking feet. Crazy. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait. No, it's because mice have souls. <laughs> but dogs don't. But humans do. Humans and mice. Okay, so far, if you're keeping notes, so far we've got <laughs> humans and mice have souls. Yeah, dogs don't. Fuck dogs. Fuck dogs. Not mice. Mice are now man's best friend because we have because we at least have souls. We have the same brain and the same soul system. Yeah, we have the same heavy soul. <laughs> no dogs go to heaven. All mice could go it's to just, heaven. It's just mice and humans up there. <laughs> Oof. Mice and men. My oh, oh, oh my mice god. And men. That's why they say that. That was a a hint. <laughs> We're close. Jesus. We're getting there. The FBI is knocking on my door right now. <laughs> oh, we've been had. We cracked it. Uh. And so it, it, this article is like, it's heated. A lot of people have a lot of opinions on this. Well, yeah, a lot of people will see it and say, see, atheist, checkmate. <laughs> right. Uh, we're not going to actually double check anything. As more information comes out about it, they start to find out that the entire process for Duncan's approach, not just with the dogs, but with the people themselves wasn't as accurate as initially expected when the, the, the second four people yeah the four people that it actually they worked still on, managed to they still fuck managed up to fuck it results up. oh my uh, god the time of death was found to be what i would consider entirely inaccurate but some say slightly the second patient stopped breathing for 15 minutes before the time of death was recorded. 15 because, minutes? Because his face was still twitching. They likely did not understand. I mean, this is a Christian hospital. Yeah, okay, yeah. They probably didn't understand that, like, your nerve and- Yeah, you and, still have like, electrical yeah, activity. Yeah, you're, like, you'll twitch. Like, people fucking move and shit even after they're dead. 15 minutes, and they were he still like, he's dead. alive. He sat dead for 15 minutes- Face was still twitching, and they were like, oh, he must be talking to the Lord. Um, <laughs> sat and waited. That's exactly what they did. Then thought. checked his pulse, and sure enough, he was dead. And that's when they took his weight. So 15 minutes after he died was when they got the lowered weight reading. Mm. So That's plenty of time for some evaporation Similar, to Similar to the third patient, I believe it was. They waited an entire minute to determine that his soul left his body. Why did it take 15 minutes for this one to leave? I mean, I'm just I'm well, asking the I questions it, we all want to know. Maybe Duncan. the soul sticks around while they're yeah. still twitching. Yeah, he had an he had an important phone call. He yeah, yeah, he really had to, <laughs> he had to call get again in wife. contact with to his mistress. <laughs> so yeah, they sat in a room with this dead body, still recording its weight for 15 minutes after it was actually fucking dead. And they checked his pulse. They're like, oh, I guess he's been dead. <laughs> we'll just record it now. And yeah. it just so happens. Well, we to... checked his pulse now. He could have been dead for the four hours that we thought he was still alive. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ultimately, it was deemed that uh, Duncan had too much bias for what he wanted to prove, which is no. terribly obvious in his own hypothesis. Uh and that he just completely overlooked any actual facts. Uh, in 2001, an experiment was done with eight sheeps, eight sheep, 
not sheeps. Jesus. Eight <laughs> sheeps. I Eight like that. sheepies. Um, and uh, they looked more into Duncan's findings. It was discovered that each sheep gained between 18 and 780 grams after death. Um, and, so they- and then over time, they returned back to their reg- like the. So they absorb weight. some souls. So sheep, okay, write this down. <laughs> yeah, sheep sheep or absorb, soul suckers. absorb souls. But not an entire soul because it's 18. So yeah. sheep we'll absorb six sevenths of souls yeah. <laughs> up, to up to 780 grams of souls. Okay. Okay. And then, but but they do mind. release yeah. them. Okay. Checkmate. So, Checkmate liberals. Don't die. Yeah. So don't die <laughs> yeah. next to yeah. sheep. Whatever you do, don't die next next to sheep. And as we learned in the exclusive last week, don't die next to pigs. Yeah. Or by the hand of one. Because it, it could eat you and steal your soul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they haven't done any tests on pigs yet, so I can't ah. say for certain. Um. So unfortunately. In 1907, when this came out, preachers and reverends and anyone religious fucking ran with it. That's why, like, in 2003, there was a movie that came out, and it's called 21 Grams, and it's like the weight of a soul. There are songs about the weight of a soul being 21 grams, despite it all being bullshit incorrect information and a fully fucking biased experiment yeah it's not accurate and it's never yeah. been able to be reproduced thanks a lot duncan mcdougall you piece of shit and the crazy thing is most modern hospital beds have built-in scales in them and nobody's reported any losses it's crazy yeah well maybe that's because these are not christian hospitals. i also know that at least in, in what does the what hospitals, does saint jude's report <laughs> yeah yeah i'll take them <laughs> No, e- even in the the hospitals that I've worked at, when I've had patients pass away, they generally do daily weights, and then they usually do a weight after they pass away. Yeah, uh, within, and they're within always within the same. Fifteen minutes of them not breathing. Generally. Well, yeah, it depends. <laughs> Standard practice. Yeah, <laughs> and it's a digital scale, so you know you're not reading a line that's and sit demons, there by tension. Demons could be fiddling around with that. Uh, the other the other go. argument that people made were. How do you know if that's the weight of a soul and not the weight of a demon? And how do you determine who had a demon leave their body when they died or a soul? Mm, yeah. Things to maybe think their about. soul's already yeah. in hell and it's just maybe, a demon hanging out. Maybe we need to do another experiment and kill 15 dogs and find out if, find out how much well, a soul we all, weighs. Well, we already thing. know they don't have souls, so let's, <laughs> let's yeah. do— We already know that they're our, con- our control group. Yeah, they're the control group, which is that's definitely what a control group is. Let's do cats. Let's strangle 14 you can't, cats. You can't do cats because cats do have sweat glands in their paws. No, no, we're not I don't care about sweat gland, sweat glands. We're trying to figure out if sweat they have glands, a soul. Yeah. Let's Yeah, but we also need to disprove August Clark, who's not smarter than us, let's be honest. Well, <laughs> we're just not going to engage with him and then we'll put memes out disproving him. Isn't that how you handle that shit? Yeah, I think so. Pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, and if you're interested in our conclusions, uh, check it out on Patreon. Yeah. Patreon.com forward slash points of pressure. (laughs) At Patreon. No. If you want to watch us murder 15 dogs, check us out on Patreon. Check us out on Patreon. (laughs) (laughs) If you want to watch us kill dogs and weigh dead bodies, find us on Patreon. (laughs) Oh, shit. You got those names. Oh, fuck. Goodness gracious. I think I do. Ah, oh, maybe. I think I do. I think I do. Active. I got to filter on the current. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. It's okay. Everyone's turned it off by now. It's yeah. Okay. So it's fine. <laughs> so I can say that the board, uh, among the three of them, have killed 15 dogs. <laughs> All right, so Minnie D. Thomas and Tony. And it is not evenly distributed. <laughs> it is not even close. <laughs> There's one standout here. We'll let you figure out who that is. Um, comment on our Instagram if if you know who uh. which board member <laughs> killed more dogs. <laughs> All right. Oh, my microphone went limp. That was weird. Uh, familiar though. 
Then, of course, we've got Abby, AJ's Third Nut, Nordic Thunder, Weston, Dark Runner, D's Nuts, G Dog, Grover, Hayden, Lara, Ravo, and Lindo. Thank you all so much. You let us keep uh, talking about dead dogs. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it. And as always, if you guys ever have any recommendations for movies, books, TV shows, uh, dirty magazines, uh, if you found an article that has to do with something we've talked about previously, like, you know, people killing dogs and stealing strays, uh, by all means, reach out to us on Instagram at points out pressure feel free to email us dead dog pics at ppdnaj oh, at gmail.com or go to our website pointsopressure.com and go to the contact us page we'll catch you fucks next monday <laughs>